Here's a brief musical demonstration that uses the three techniques I discuss in this video for obtaining sounds with slow attack envelopes. Two of these approaches can be done on any model of machine drum, and the third approach is specific to the machine drum UW, as it involves the use of the sampling machines. Since all the time values on the machine drum are tied to the sequencer clock, it's always important to remember how this will affect your sound design and composition decisions. Here you can see that I am automating the mastery cue by using P-locked tricks with slides on the control EQ track to smoothly interpolate between frequencies. I discovered when using LFOs to modulate the parametric band's frequency that quite a bit of popping occurs when the cue is turned up, as the filter frequency values do not get smoothly interpolated when controlled by LFOs. For this type of synthesis exploration, I often find that using noise is very helpful for initial testing and experimentation. So I will start by putting a noise generator on track one. And I'm going to turn up the decay a bit. Then going to turn the volume parameter to exactly 63. Now, into the LFO page. The first LFO shape we want to work with for this application is conveniently the default second LFO shape. So let's just move the shape mix all the way clockwise, and also the LFO depth up to maximum. For a slow attack envelope, we need a slow LFO. So I've set this to 12 for the moment. Update also needs to be set to trig behavior, and we need to route the LFO to the volume parameter. Going to check my decay. Yeah, I think I'm going to turn that up a bit. Maybe I need to speed it up a little. Okay, there we go. Some white noise fading in. Go a little slower. Try a bit more speed here. Let's try the linear envelope shape now. Let's mix in some of that other shape. Choppy. Lots of great results available, depending on what you're looking for. Even more results in envelope shapes are available if you route additional LFOs from other tracks to control additional gain-related parameters, such as the distortion or the filter resonance. Or perhaps use an additional LFO to modulate the LFO you're already using on the volume parameter. There are a multitude of ways available on the machine drum to sculpt amplitude envelopes and dynamically modulate the timbre of your sounds. I'm just scratching the surface here to show a somewhat non-obvious, but rather simple and useful example.
So now for the next technique, I will move to track two, and I'm going to turn it into another noise generator. This time I'm just going to turn the decay all the way up. Now I'm going to make the pattern four bars long and place a trig for the noise generator on step one. Now I'm going to put a control 8 p machine on the next track and assign the first parameter to control track 2's volume. So, track 2. And volume. Now I will put a trig on the first step of the sequence and P-lock the volume to zero. Then I will put a trig on the first step of the third bar with a volume of 127. Then I will put slide trigs all the way across the control 8P track so that the volume parameter is smoothly interpolated between steps. The P-locks on the control 8P machine act as trigless trigs altering parameters on the destination track without triggering the sound generator. Let's try moving this one around. Pretty clear what's going on here. You can even see on the Control 8 p parameter page the number moving with the slide tricks. Why not put some more in for fun? Very easy, and you have a lot of straightforward control using slide tricks and the Control 8P machine to smoothly modulate parameters. We can't change the curve of the slide, but it's still a very powerful technique. The last approach I'm going to show is a bit different approach using the sampling machines. First, I'm going to put down yet another noise machine. Then I'm going to put down the first RAM recording machine and also the corresponding RAM playback machine. By resampling a percussive sound, I can reverse it on playback, turning the decay into a slow attack. Okay, so I'll just tweak this RAM playback machine to reverse playback, starting at 96 and ending at 0. Then I'm going to set up the RAM record machine so we don't get any noise from the inputs, and we're going to resample the main output. I'm going to turn the length down a bit to 96, because I don't need it to be quite that long. This also matches up with how I adjusted the start point of the sample. I'm going to futz with the noise gen decay a bit. After all, it's going to be our attack envelope pretty soon.
then I need a record trig and a playback trig. I'll start the sequencer to resample the noise generator. I'll delete that record trig and playback trig, and now we have a sample. Let's give that a little tap. Nice. With the RAM machines, a variety of sampling techniques come into play for sculpting the envelope. We can mess with the pitch to shorten or lengthen the sample, and we can use the hold and decay parameters of the RAM playback machine to fine-tune things a bit further as well.